Hello, I'm Paul Alisauskas. I'm one of the designers here at Firelight in Adelaide, South Australia. Firelight's a new driving light company that was incorporated in South Australia and released our first product back in March of 2011. What I'd like to do is start off by talking about the light source itself. Before I do so, I'd just like to point out that it's impossible to actually judge the quality of the light purely on the basis of the source or the reflector in isolation. The performance of a driving light really is the sum of all of its components. It's the relationship between the bulb, between the reflector and between the lens, particularly when the lens is coloured. Firelight at the concept development stage considered all available light sources, HID, LED and halogen. When we looked at it in detail with modern halogen manufacturing techniques, we found that we could produce a driving light that would outperform HID for a fraction of the price. And this drove our concept direction. We've accurately matched the reflector to the type of light source that we've used, that is the shape of the filament within the bulb, and we've been able to produce an extraordinarily powerful halogen driving light. In fact, so powerful that it's, it's rivaled 70 watt HID. Now, traditionally, HID was the light source of choice for high performance driving lights. Well, up until Firelight have come along anyway. Firelight has been able to produce better than HID performance without the expensive architecture of HID. Now, in many cases with a premium brand, Firelight can save you over $1,000. Now, HID, to its benefit or credit, actually draws a few less amps. Over a standard 70 watt system per light, you'd save something of the order of 12 amps. Now, this is a fairly trivial saving. It's been beat up to be more significant than it is. An old car like this 1976 Land Cruiser, which is affectionately known as Fugly, has been running a set of Firelight 150 watt halogen driving lights now for a number of years. In fact, the two that are on here now are actually the first off-tool samples produced by Firelight. Um, so it demonstrates quite clearly that the amperage draw is not significant, certainly not for any modern vehicle. This particular vehicle here runs a 55 amp alternator and at 13.2 volts we're consuming something of the order of around 11 and a bit amps. Now, when you consider the cost of HID, and in some cases you can spend over $1,000 more over the price of a pair of firelights, all you're really getting is a saving of 12 amps. Now, for $1,000 this doesn't represent good value, and certainly not to the designers at Firelight. You could buy a replacement alternator for a fraction of the price of that. Not that you'd need it on any modern vehicle, not that you'd even need it on an old vehicle. What I'd like to do now is to walk you through the individual components that make up Firelight. Um, and what I'd like to do is start at the front of the light and work my way back and just discuss the components, why we've chosen those components um, and how they relate to the performance of the product. What I'd like to do is start by looking at the lens. And before I do so, I'll show you just how easy it is to get the lens out. You might need the aid of a small coin, but nonetheless, you pop it in the slots, put your thumb on either side, and then push down and rotate counterclockwise. It'll rotate easily at first until it hits the cam stops, and then it'll get quite firm and it'll eject into your hands. The Firelight lens is manufactured from polycarbonate, and it has a hard automotive coat over the top. Now, we call it a sacrificial lens. The reason we've done that is we've decided that by the elimination of covers, we can actually improve the light output. So what we decided was to manufacture a lens that in itself was a cover at the same time. And as you can see, it can quite quickly be removed and replaced. We've also positioned the price in the market approximately at the same price that you would pay for covers. The benefits of this is you don't get mud or dirt trapped in behind your covers, as well as you pick up an increase in light output. Every time you put a surface over the light, you do actually compromise the light output. So Firelight have designed out the redundancy of covers and simply made our lens fully interchangeable and sacrificial. What I'd like to do is now show you how easy it is to put a Firelight lens back into place. There's a couple of markings on the top of the lens. You can line them up with the key on the top of the light. You push them in into the unlock position, rotating it clockwise and pushing in as you go. You won't need any coins to do this. You should be able to do this with your thumbs. It'll go all the way around until it hits the stop and it's in place. Next, I'd like to talk to you about our reflector. It's manufactured from aluminium. It has a hard base coat. It is in vacuum metalised and on top of the vacuum metalising it has a hard coat placed upon it. The purpose of the hard coat is so that you can actually clean the reflector 
without damaging it. As long as you use a soft cloth, you're able to remove any debris or any moisture in the event that it was to get into the light and still have a serviceable life. In the absence of a, a good quality hard top coat, any contaminants inside the light may cause either discoloration or cause the reflector to go black. What I'd like to show you next is just how easy it is to replace a reflector in the event that you did permanently damage one. Firstly, remove the front lens as shown previously by rotating it counterclockwise up against the cams, gets quite firm, push out. Next, before we remove the screw at the bottom of the reflector, we need to take the spring tension off the bulb holder. So rotate the bulb holder to the unlocked position and it will eject out into your hands. Next, with clean fingers or a soft cloth, put your fingers out wide on the reflector, rotating it counterclockwise until it hits the stops. Once it's done that, you can put your fingers in through the back of the light and push the reflector forward and remove it for cleaning or servicing. The reflector, as with all components in Firelight, are easily replaced and can be purchased individually. Now I'd like to talk to you about the Firelight housing. It's manufactured from 30% glass filled polyamide. Polyamide is more commonly known as nylon. This particular grade is very, very strong. In fact, it's got a flexural strength of 185 megapascals. It's got a 4.8 millimeter wall section commonly throughout the product, which is nearly double that to what you most commonly see in a lot of driving lights in the market today. This particular grade is a proven automotive performer in both high and low temperatures, literally from the desert to the Arctic Circle. The bulb holder is an important part of the firelight design. It has a number of user interfaces associated with it. It controls the spot spread adjustment, also the quick release function for quick bulb changeover, as well as it integrates a Gore-Tec breather in the centre which allows gas to escape when the light heats up during operation. When you look at the front of the bulb holder, it obviously controls the positioning of the bulb, as well as a stainless steel spring which holds it into position. Coming off to the side of the fly leads that plug in to the integrated terminals with inside the housing. This component, like all others, can be readily replaced and removed and serviced. It has a serviceable seal located at the back of it, which from time to time may require lubrication with the silicon grease.